Good afternoon, I'm Jane, and I would like to share a devotion this afternoon, and I appreciate you stopping in. It's so nice to not be uh, just keeping this stuff balled up inside and uh, having an opportunity to to uh, share and um, let someone else in on um, some things I've been uh, receiving in the spirit and in my heart. Um, about a week ago, I had a dream, and it was uh, very, very short, and it seemed like it wasn't even worth sharing. And I told my husband about it, and I also said that I didn't really want to share it because it was so insignificant, but yet I knew that that was the wrong attitude to have. So I asked the Lord to show me what He meant by it and, and how it, it could be significant, and um, then yesterday it, it came about. So I thought, okay, I trust the, the idea, and it might enrich and bless you like it has me. The dream was just so bizarre. I, um, there I was. I was at a convention hall, a very large, large building, uh, your typical convention hall with the industrial uh, architecture, the big windows, and um, it, we were having a break, and I don't know why I was there, what the, the, uh, the um, event was about, but uh, we had a break, and so I was gonna get something to eat out of a concession machine. And I was waiting behind a woman and her two daughters to get something out of the concession machine. The woman was Asian, and she had one of her children, probably age two, on her hip, really close. And the other one was down low on the floor. And she had crouched down, it looked like, to ask them what they wanted to eat out of the machine. And um, so uh, I was patient waiting behind them to get what I wanted out of the machine. And I noticed something very strange about the three of them, the uh, mother, her two-year-old, and her four-year-old. Okay, the mother's long, shiny black hair was connected and braided to her four-year-old's hair. So the four-year-old's hair was braided with her hair, and it was co-joined. Then the two-year-old, the smallest child, was then co-joined. Her long, shiny black hair was braided in with her sister. So the three of them were connected. And I saw that, and I immediately thought how close the Asians are in a culture uh, in their family unit, how protected their children are. If you've ever known an Asian family, they have a very high quality of connection and bond with their children. Uh, uh, but uh, they, those children were not going anywhere. But at one moment, the, the little two-year-old had, in her rebellious little spirit, decided to run. And as she ran, it jerked her hair really hard one way, and she squealed because it hurt the roots of her scalp. And so, you know, the mother quietly told her, you know, to come back and, and she picked the daughter up and, and they went on their way, the three of them, uh, you know, one on each hip. Um, so I then realized that's what I dreamed and yeah, it's, it's you know, one of those things. But um, in reading the story about Samson, I then realized that that could have a connection with this vision that I had and what it meant to me, you know, in that traditionally Asians in any culture have to um, sometimes break away from what their uh, religious origin might be in order to come to know the Lord uh, in a, in a, biblical fashion as as we're taught my dog is so so annoying right now and i'm not really sure what he wants did you lose your ball okay i'm gonna take your ball and you're not gonna get it if you don't just like there all right sorry okay um so the story about Samson in the Bible, it comes in Judges, 
Judges 13 to 16. And uh, the background behind the story of uh, Samson is that the um, Israel Israelites were uh, a defiant people. They were rebellious. God would give them commandments and uh, they would disobey. And so he would allow the Philistines, a very uh, pagan society, to overcome them and to rule them. And when this would happen then, the Israelites would then be afraid of God and then they would repent and then they would then reconnect renew their, their uh, obedience, and then they would become followers again then of God. And it was like a yo-yo back and forth with their defiance. So that's what was coming up and leading up to Samson. Samson had led the Israelites for 20 years. When he was born to his father Manoah and his mother um, at that time, the mother was sterile. She was unable to have a child and an angel came to her in the field to tell her that she was going to have a baby. And she got excited and told her husband. Her husband was a little bit skeptical, so he had to meet the angel. But after he met him, then his faith grew and he believed then his wife that they were going to have a child. But he wanted to know how he was to raise the child. Uh, after she had the baby and the angel was very clear about the instructions in the way that they should raise the child he was to have no drink uh, he was supposed to uh, eat clean food and not cut his hair so uh, they agreed to do that they even offered the angel to stay for dinner I thought that was sweet uh, but the angel declined was very gracious and um, but they did offer the goat then that they were going to serve uh, for dinner up as an offering to God. And as they were offering this goat to God in thanking the angel then for the good news about the coming baby, the angel went up with the flames in the smoke of the offering. So it was a real celebration. So the baby is born and he is named Samson. He is blessed, and he's an, going to be an anointed judge uh, for the people of Israel. He grows, though, and just like any teenager, becomes attracted to the opposite sex, and he uh, sees a woman and, and wants to marry her. The problem is the woman that he seems to think that is the one that's supposed to be is a Philistine, and the Philistines were their enemy. So his parents objected. They wanted him to find another woman, more of his kind. But the spirit was moving Samson to ask this woman in the hand of her in marriage. So he followed the uh, spirit of God. So uh, despite his parents' objection, his parents went to meet the girl. And on their way to meeting the girl, they're coming around the corner of a vineyard and out comes a lion. Now, the parents don't see the lion. It's a young lion. But the lion, it attacks Samson. And Samson, through the strength of the spirit, is able to subdue the lion. He grabs it a certain way and kills it. And they go on. His parents never heard a thing. Um, and they go to meet his, his future wife. The, the both parents, the sets of parents meet and they plan the wedding. It's going to be a seven day event. Um, but uh, uh, this, this incident with the lion is, is not a insignificant detail in the story. And I feel that part of the story is the most important thing in the story. Some people interpret the story differently, but I think that's really the crown, uh, crown event. So, okay, the seven-day wedding, I'm sure there's a lot of drinking uh, going on, but I don't believe Samson was drinking any, but uh, it sounded like some of the guests were. There were many people there. It said 30 guests were brought in, um, and they were probably Philistines because it seemed like um, there was a lot of, of commotion going on. Um, for one, um, uh, prior... Prior to this event, actually, 
Prior to this event, I better tell you, he went back to see if he could find the dead lion. Samson was curious about this lion that he had killed prior to his wedding, and um, when he found the lion, uh, it was pretty picked over by vultures. It was cleaned up, and the carcass was laying there, but inside the carcass was a beehive, and the beehive produced a lot of honey and it looked very delicious and hot and warm so um, Samson he just scooped up a big handful of the honey and he actually shared it with his parents um, on the way to the wedding feast okay so so uh, catch up a little ways then he's he's got this um, experience with with the lion and, and the honey and the bees so there at the wedding feast he um, through just his cleverness, creates a riddle. And Samson's riddle is this. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. He wants the guests at the wedding feast to, to guess what the answer is to his riddle. Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. Well, for three days, they could not give the answer. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's new wife, coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us or we will burn you and your father's household to death. So the guests threatened the new wife with, with uh, the death of, of she and her father, uh, if, if she didn't um, coax Samson out of the answer to the riddle. Those are not very nice guests to have at a wedding feast. Then Samson's wife threw herself on Samson, sobbing, you hate me, you don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. Samson said, I haven't even explained it to my father or mother. He replied, so why should I explain it to you? She cried, the whole seven days of the feast and are here. And so on the seventh day, he finally told her because she continued to press him. She in turn explained the riddle then to her people. So she got the information she wanted from him by a threat. And um, the answer then comes out of the guests. Before sunset on, sunset on the seventh day, the men of the town said to him the answer. And the answer they gave is, what is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? They kind of formed it in a question like they do on the game Jeopardy. What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And Samson said to them, he was suspicious. How did they find out the answer? I mean, if you think about the riddle, out of the eater, something to eat, out of the strong, something sweet, there's absolutely no way you could get that answer unless someone directly told you. So he thinks they have slept with his, his new wife. He said, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. And it's pretty obvious that they had. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and struck down 30 of their men. He stripped them of their belongings, and he gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. I forgot to tell you, he did have a, um, a reward. For those that did solve the riddle, they would get 30 pieces of clothing and 30 tunics. So he went down and got them. Um, later on at the time... Um, of wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. Um, but when he got there, his father-in-law had said that he had given his wife to one of his friends at the wedding uh, because he didn't think that Samson liked his wife enough, it didn't, didn't love her enough. So he basically, as a father-in-law, betrayed Samson and gave his new wife away to someone else. So that infuriated Samson. I was so sure, I was so, uh, sure that you thoroughly hated her, said the father-in-law. 
that I gave her to your friend. 